If you think that accounts payable is simply about getting invoices and automatically paying whatever comes in, you are potentially costing your organization hundreds of thousands of dollars each year, if not more. The process is a lot more complex than that. It's not difficult, but you do need to cover all the steps. Skip one of the steps that I'm about to discuss and the impact could be substantial and not in a good way. Make sure you stick around until the end when I discuss the one step some organizations slack off on sometimes and the results can be devastating. Hey guys, I'm Mary Schaefer. For the last 25 years, I've spent my time eating, drinking, and sleeping accounts payable and related issues. I've shared what I've learned in over 20 published books, most still available from online booksellers, thousands of magazine and newsletter articles, over 600 videos for this channel, and thousands of webinar and conference talks for both educational institutions and a few service providers. I want to quickly go through what can go wrong if you skip any of the steps that I'm about to discuss. Very briefly, you could end up making duplicate payments because you get more than one copy of the same invoice, paying too much because the supplier put the wrong price on the invoice, missing early payment discounts because your processes were not streamlined so that you could get invoices with early payment discounts paid in a timely manner. You could have incurred lay fees for the same reason. And uh, those lay fees also can end up antagonizing suppliers who really just want to get their money on time. You could also waste a lot of time weeding out duplicate copies of invoices. And worst of all, you could end up paying fraudulent invoices. Did I miss anything? If so, please let us know in the comments below. As a best practice, the goal of any accounts payable department is to pay the right supplier the right amount at the right time. It's that simple. The steps that we're about to discuss will help you make sure that that happens in your organization. The steps for the proper handling of an invoice are the same, regardless of whether you're doing everything manually or you've automated your process or some combination therein. They include receiving, approving, verifying, paying, and updating. Now let's take a look at each of them in a little more detail. Step number one, receiving the invoice correctly. This means a centralized receipt of invoices so that you should set up one email address, one fax number, and one snail mail address. That each of these should be very precise and this is where invoices should go and only go there. And of course, you want to make sure that your suppliers are only sending one copy of that invoice. You don't need two or three or four copies of it. Now, today, as I, I make this, over 70% of invoices are now received by email. You want to push to get 100% received by email. We want to get rid of the paper. It's inefficient for, for many re reasons, and you know, you know what they are. You don't need me to go into it. So you want to push for elect, uh, electronic receipt of invoices. Um, um, now, some of you do not get invoices re uh, received centralized, but they go to the person who's going to approve it. And, and some organizations take the stance that they think that is saving a step. Maybe it is. In some cases, it is. In some cases, it, is, it isn't. But it creates a whole bunch of other problems. And so we recommend the centralized receipt of the invoice. Now, um, one last point about this, and then I'm going to move on. If you are buying an automation solution, and I know many of you are, then you want to make sure you get one that has the ability to read invoices directly from email so that you can you can automate that step as well all right step number two approvals once those invoices are received they need to be sent out for approval uh, they typically go to the person who ordered the goods and depending upon uh, the level of um, authorization that's been given from the board of directors either that person will approve it or occasionally someone at a higher level if it's a large order uh, slow approvals I'm not going to lie to you continue to be a problem approvers do not do um, a very good job of approving in a timely manner or at least some of them do some are really good but anyway that continues to be a problem that's a discussion for another time and we need to get these invoices approved step number three the invoices are verified for accuracy now you might say well why do they have to do this we already sent it out for approval doesn't the approver you know check everything and the answer to that is no 
the approvers in general, you know, some might check everything, but by and large, they don't verify the invoice for accuracy for a whole bunch of different other things. They just kind of approve it. Yeah, I ordered that and they, and they approve it and off it goes. And that's the world we live in. And that's why this verification is done in the in your accounts payable group using uh, the proverbial three-way Mac. Okay, step number four, once the invoice has been received, approved and verified, and everything's you know copacetic, everything's good to go, then you can schedule it for payment according to whatever your pre-agreed pre payment terms are with the particular vendor in question. Now, when it comes to payments, um, at least for the United States, which is what, what I'm speaking about um, when I'm talking about payments, at least at this particular point, well, you typically have four alternatives. Most companies will use one of either an ACH, a, a paper check, um, in a few cases, a wire transfer, and sometimes a P card. We are in the process of uh, making a concerted effort to get away from paper checks, or at least many companies are. Many companies have done a, a pretty good job. And we are already at the point in the United States where over 50% of our B2B payments are being made via ACH. And we want to get that number up. In an ideal world, we would have no paper checks. But, you know, we don't live in that ideal world. But most organizations will be making this move to ACH. Now, before we get to that all important last step, uh, which more than a few people mess up, I'm sorry to say, I'd like you to in invite you to join our community by simply hitting the subscribe button. Step number five, update your records and update your records in a timely manner. What that means is immediately when you are you're, you're processing the invoice and you set it up for payment, the purchase order and the receiving document that are associated with that invoice should be extinguished immediately. This means that somebody else will not have the opportunity to use it uh, during the three-way match if a second or a third copy of that invoice shows up. And you know, at this point in time, about 25% of all invoices are sent multiple times. So that's a huge opportunity, if you will, for somebody to get a duplicate payment. And you do not want to make that duplicate payment because as you know, many, many, any suppliers do not return duplicate payments unless you take some action you have to find it it's a lot of extra work it makes your accounts payable function less efficient now most of accounts payable are pretty good about doing this but there is a place as I alluded to in the beginning where this falls apart in many organizations wire transfers are done outside of accounts payable and because of that sometimes ACH payments are done outside of of accounts payable there's nothing wrong with that as long as you have the appropriate controls in place but what happens when this when when this does happen oftentimes the person making that payment will not extinguish the purchase order and the receiving document immediately they'll wait till either the end of the week or the end of the month and then they'll do them all at the at one time now that might seem like it's more efficient and a more effective way for the person who's doing it because after all they don't have to sit there and you know constantly you know go into the purchase order system and go into the receiving documents system but and this is a big but it means those documents live out there and if another copy of that invoice shows up it will be processed and and sadly paid so you want to make sure that you're extinguishing these documents on a very very timely banner which means as soon as you make as soon as you schedule the item for payment it also means that periodically you should have someone and we can have a big debate over who that someone should be um, it doesn't really matter who it is as long as somebody does it somebody should review purchase orders and receiving documents that are stale dated that are very old you should look into it was you know did you issue this purchase order and then the order was canceled and then you want to extinguish that purchase order um, why are these receiving documents out there did you never receive an invoice you know so you need to look see what happened and then take care of it but you need to do this very carefully and you need to document what you're doing and then you need to have somebody sign off on it because otherwise you have the potential for fraud now now, we mentioned the proverbial three-way match earlier. We mentioned it actually several times, but we didn't go into it in much detail. Understanding this concept and how it works is critical to any accounts payable operation. That's why we've done several short videos on the three-way match, and we put them together in a short playlist, which you can watch right now with the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.